Today on City Line, it's our sleep special and we're unlocking the secret to sweet dreams. We are going to be talking about the 10 3 2 1 0 sleep rule. We'll lay out the rules, but you don't have to follow them. And I know immediately when I have a glass of wine, I'm going to have a bad sleep. But we still do it, right? Yeah, we do. Then the golden ticket to snooze town. I'd like to encourage everybody to treat themselves to pajamas. Perfect PJ picks from a woman who takes pajamas very seriously. You got a lot hanging around your I house? Have a lot and even divided by season and drawers. Oh my goodness. Like, I really love pajamas. Yeah, and later, yoga for sleep. Find that They're happy walking. baby, that joyful energy. It's City Law with Tracy Moore. Welcome to City Line, everyone. Here's my question to you. Did you get enough sleep last night? If you did, well, good on you, and I'm jealous. If you didn't, we have every trick in the book to make sure you get enough Z's on today's sleep special, an entire hour dedicated to sleep, which I love. We're gonna start with how to get a good night's rest with Alana McGinn, of course, our sleep expert. Come on in, Alana. We did get you out of your pajamas for a few episodes of City Line. We're Thank right you. back into your snuggly <laughs> pajamas now because this is a topic I will never get sick of talking about. I'm nutty about sleep. I love to sleep and I would love to get more. So before we get into the rules, talk to me a little bit about um, this thing that I heard. Women require more sleep than men? They do. Studies show that women need 20 more minutes of sleep per night than you're gonna men. say 20 more hours uh, so i'm like uh, you're darn night. Night. but here's the thing we're not getting either minutes right. or hours right. um and the reason for that is women tend to multitask more we tend yes. to exert more mental energy so we need more sleep and yeah. like i said we're not getting it okay so we are gonna help you try to get sleep You've got a formula that we're gonna be following. What's the formula? We are gonna be talking about the 10, 3, 2, 1, 0 sleep rules. So okay. these are rules that we implement at nighttime to create a great nighttime routine okay. so that we get a great night of sleep. 10 hours, what are we talking about in the 10 hours? What should we not be doing 10 hours before sleep? 10 hours, we wanna cut out the caffeine. Ooh, and this okay. is dependent, because some people are more sensitive to caffeine than others. I am not that person that can drink a cup before they go to bed. I wish I could, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, but caffeine is a stimulant, so it suppresses our melatonin. It takes 15 minutes for caffeine to enter our bloodstream mm -hmm. and 10 hours for it to be removed. So That's if, a long time. It is a long time. So if you feel like you are more sensitive, you wanna curb it at least by noon. Both yeah. liquid and food. Think too, like chocolate, anything you're eating with caffeine, you want to avoid it at least 10 hours before you go to bed. 10 hours, okay. Yeah. Uh, your next number is three. Three. Three hours before bed, what should we not be doing? This is alcohol, and that's hard right. because a lot of people look at that glass of wine as a relaxer, which I get. I'm like that too. Yeah. Um, and it can help them fall asleep, but it interrupts our REM sleep, um, our REM sleep phase while yeah. we're sleeping. So it doesn't promote a great night of sleep. So 90 minutes after we fall asleep, we enter that REM state of sleep. This is where our brain is more active. We are getting more mentally restorative sleep and alcohol can fragment as it leaves our body can fragment that phase, yeah. um, which pushes us into sleep inertia. Sleep inertia is the state when we wake up and we're feeling kind of groggy and foggy. Think of it yeah. like a sleep hangover. You don't feel great. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where you want to curb that alcohol. Instead, go to maybe like a mocktail, okay. right, for dinner. So yeah. TikTok right now is showing the Sleepy Girl mocktail. All right. So it consists of tart cherry juice, 100% tart cherry juice, yeah. magnesium powder, and a soda water. Mm -hmm. A lot of the recipes are calling for like really sugary soda waters. You also don't want to drink a huge sugary glass of anything before you go to bed, so right. just be careful with that. But cherry um, cherry juice has melatonin, it has tryptophan, yes. so it's going to improve our sleep quality, it's going to improve our sleep efficiency, mm -hmm. and then magnesium magnesium calms the body down. So that could be a good That's alternative a good to mocktail. that glass of wine, right? Also, tart cherry is really good for uh, muscle restoration. Yes. So like if you have a like hard day at the gym, last week was a bad week for my legs. Yes. I needed some tart cherry juice there you go. for recovery. Yeah. Uh, and I know immediately when I have a glass of wine, I'm going to have a bad sleep. Isn't that so sad? Well, yeah. And I, you know days, what? I'm the same way, but we still do it, right? Yeah, we do. I know we do. But now I've just got to do it earlier, yeah. according to Alana. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, the next rule is a tough one, especially for those of us who are working from home. Mm -hmm. Tell us what we should not be doing two hours before bed. This is where we really, we have to have that clock out time for work. Yeah. And, we, and here's the thing, whether you work from home or you work in an office, we're always connected to something. So we're mm -hmm. always answering that email, working on that work project. So you need to set those boundaries. So things like at the start of the day, write out a to-do list with all your must-dos. What are the hardest things you got to do that day? Yeah. So that if you do have to clock out, your whole list isn't done, you don't feel that guilt. So you don't feel like you have to do it before bedtime. Yeah, I like and that. journal before you go to bed. I do this. My business ideas always come to me either in the shower or right before I go to bed. Okay. Um, so I'll like give my brain that dump and write yeah. down all my creative thoughts so I'm not thinking about it at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's weird because we always thought technology was supposed to make our lives better. But what yeah. we're doing is now we're connected all always. the time. Yes. You have to stop working. 100%. Right? 100%. Uh, we have heard of this one. Turn off your screen one hour before bed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of us are doing it. I'm pretty good about it because I read before bed. Yeah. Um, but why is this important? So I'm pretty good about it too. That is one mm. big rule that we have in our house. Here's the thing, not all tech is created equal. So not all tech yeah. is bad. I think if you are someone who knows, okay, I really need to make some changes to my sleep health, removing tech is the best thing you can do. Cause like we just said, we're always connected. Yeah. So do like a family docking station in your home outside of your bedroom where you can plug in all your devices. Mm -hmm. um, if you are someone where you're like, you know, I need to make some changes, just set boundaries. Like what's your favorite show? What's your feel good show? There's so many. Um, I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. Like, I can watch that all day, all night. Okay, so this isn't me giving you permission to do that. Okay. To watch till like two in the morning. But yeah. if one episode's gonna help you like forget your day because you yeah. just had a lousy day, watch an episode. Like yeah. that's okay to do. Connect with the friends that fill your tank, not with the ones that empty it. You know, and there's also mm. great tech like meditation apps, mindful thinking apps, uh, mindful breathing apps that can help you sleep better too. I now collect the kids' phones and plug yes. them into my room and my phone is in the kitchen. So now nobody's got a phone. And we have teens and that's not always hard teens. to do. I've got yeah, we've got to show them. I never I thought I was going to be that kind of parent, but I it's know. like, no, 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 they're with me now, yeah. and yeah. there's a limit, you know? Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the alarm clock. So you've got to rule a little bit about our uh, alarm clock, something we shouldn't be doing. Yes, so zero on the sleep rules is never hit that snooze button. And I know that that's hard. Mm -hmm. It can be hard for me as well sometimes. But here's the thing, when we are, a full cycle of sleep for an adult is anywhere between 90 to 110 minutes. So okay. when we are waking up and then hitting the snooze button and drifting back into sleep, we are entering a full cycle of sleep, but we're waking up nine minutes into that cycle. So this again is that sleep inertia, right? We're waking up feeling groggy and foggy. Right. Worse than when the alarm originally went off. Okay. And it takes four hours to kind of slug off that feeling of sleep inertia. So we're not doing our body or mind any favors by hitting that snooze button. Okay. So this is where we want to avoid doing that. Set your alarm clock away from your bed so that mm. when you it goes off, you have to physically get out of bed and turn it off and then oh, you, chances God, that's are. painful. It is painful. But it's better. It is better for you. You'll feel better. Yeah. You'll feel more refreshed. Get up the first time. Um, talk to me about the witching hour. So there seems to be this time in night where, where people are waking up. What's that all about? That 3 to 4 a.m. Uh, wake up is very common. So okay. in the year 1535, the Catholic Church forbade the term witching hour comes from where the Catholic Church forbade anyone between 3 to 4 a.m. to do any kind of activities because they thought that was like the witchcraft hours, right? Mm. But that time is a very common time for individuals to wake up for a few reasons. Yeah. One is if you do wake up at that time and you fall asleep pretty well, don't worry about it. Like, it's mm -hmm. not a big deal. The reason why we could be waking up is maybe, um, you know, back in the day, we slept in segmented sleep. Our ancestors didn't need less sleep, but they would have the first sleep, and then they would do things, and then they would have the second sleep. But with modern world, with gas lighting, and now iPhones, we are pushing our bedtime later, and now we just have the one sleep. Got it. Also, with our intervals of sleep, with our cycle of sleep, four to four and a half hours into, into the night, we tend to sleep in a lighter state of sleep. Mm -hmm. which means around that 3 a.m. wake up, when we're cycling into that next cycle of sleep, we wake up more. So if we have a lot on the mind, if we have a lot oh. going on, we tend to wake up more. And then we think we have prob like a problem right. at that time. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about if you wake up, how do we get back down? Or what do we need to be thinking about if we are waking up nightly? So this is where we need to find out what are the reasons why we're waking up at this yeah. time. So one is, could it be low blood sugar? So if you're having dinner earlier in the night and then you know yes. four or five hours going to bed, do we need to stabilize our blood sugar? So maybe have like a bedtime snack 
before okay. you go to bed to keep those blood sugar uh, levels stabilized. Mm -hmm. Do you have to pee? How is mm -hmm. your temperature? Every right? night, every night. Every night. And uh, listen, when you're sleeping, your body can only really focus on one thing. We wanted to focus on sleeping well, getting good quality. So yeah. limit your liquid intake, yeah. um, making sure you're using proper bedding, proper pajamas, so you're not busy kind of regulating your temperature. Mm -hmm. Are we working on stress management? We've talked about this a few times, right? We need mm -hmm. to schedule time throughout the day to stress out so yeah. that we're not doing it at three o'clock in the morning. So yeah. Yeah. Working on stress management tools. Um, and then are you actually going to bed too soon? A lot of my clients will okay. say, I'm waking up at 3 a.m., but they're going to sleep at 9 p.m. That's six hours of sleep. So yeah. that could be your body telling you, I'm good. I'm ready to get up. Okay. So do we need to actually make that bedtime a bit later? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. I love that. There's so much to consider. So much. One little controversial piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you should just not pee and hold it? I've heard that before. Okay, and I getting up is going to be so disruptive. Like, don't pee. I don't. I'm I'm a big like release the bladder I kind know. of girl, I right? Know. You can't focus on no, anything. You can't. And again, you don't want your body busy working on like holding your bladder because you're not going to get a good night's sleep. Fair. Yeah. And Lana, thank you so much for that. Wouldn't we all like to bring tranquility to our evenings with soft, radiant, and well-rested skin while we sleep? Of course. Majestics Organics is a silky, non-greasy, and nourishing, sleep-toned, bedtime essential facial oil. Sounds beautiful. And you're all going to take one home. So you enjoy that. And we're going to take a short break, everyone. This hour is all about getting you your good sleep. Stay with us. coming up, why good sleep and good sleepwear are connected. If you're in really comfortable pajamas that you feel cute in, I genuinely think you're going to have a better sleep. City Lines experts can help you. We're looking for suggestions. What would you recommend? What tips might you have? With everything from decor dilemmas. I'm wondering if you can help me with a sunken living room. Fashion finds. And what to wear as the mother of the bride. Fabulous food and so much more. You are in good hands. Send us your videos, pictures, and questions to submissions at cityline.tv or scan the code on your screen to get expert advice for real life. Let me know. Thanks. talking all about sleep today on City Line, and good sleep is partly influenced by good sleepwear. And to help us pick, choose, and love our pajamas, and I love my pajamas, is Shona Jensen, everyone. Hi. Also a pajama lover. Oh, a deep, deep pajama lover. You got a lot hanging around your I house? I have a lot, and even divided by season and drawers. Oh, my goodness. Like, I really love pajamas. Yeah, me too. I wear yeah. them as soon as I get home. I take out my outdoor clothes, put on my indoor clothes, and indoor clothes is pajamas. Okay? Uh, if you come yeah. to my door, I'm usually in PJs and braless and that's the way I like it. I probably have at least 20 pairs of pajamas yeah. at home. I love it. Yeah. So what matters the most when it comes to picking the right uh, pair of pajamas for you? Okay, so first and foremost, I'd like to encourage everybody to treat themselves to pajamas. Yes. Like, don't have your pajamas be the afterthought. Yeah. And that doesn't mean spending a lot of money. It can mean that if you want to really, really treat yourself. Mm -hmm. But I really want people... I think when you feel good, whether you're at work or whether you're working out or whether you're doing the dishes, yeah. you just perform better. And by that, I mean, in this case, sleep better. If you're mm. in really comfortable pajamas that you feel cute in, mm -hmm. it's just a cherry on top, I genuinely think you're going to have a better sleep amongst a million other things to help you sleep better. But I do think pajamas are important. It's something to look forward to at night, too. Like, yes. let me put on my pajamas, and I like my pajamas. There's not holes all over them. Like, yeah. it's just I like to wear them. Yeah, I agree. So let's talk about what we're considering in our pajamas. Yeah, so beyond the aesthetic, beyond the cute, yeah. uh, fabric is really important. Mm -hmm. Choosing the right fabric for you. There's mm -hmm. a lot of good fabrics out there, but the right fabric for you. So let's go through a few of the different fabrics that are kind of commonly used in pajama. Yeah, let's start with cotton. Starting with cotton. Yeah. It's a terrific, terrific fabric. Yes. It is uh, generally, an, it can be an inexpensive fabric. It's really, really easily to make into, easy to make into different types of fabrics. I'll get yeah. to that in a second. It's washer friendly. It's usually dryer friendly. Love that. Now what you want to look, and it's breathable. Mm -hmm. So what you want to look for in uh, your pajamas, it's it can be hard to find 100% 
cotton mm -hmm. nowadays. A lot of things are blends. And the bigger the blend, the less breathable it's going to be. The okay. more poly, poly polyester, yep. poly cotton, mm -hmm. the more of that that's in there is the less breathable it's going to be. So yeah. flannel pajamas, for example, if you're a cozy girl, you're someone who is cold a lot. I am cold a lot. Yeah. I'm one of those people. And so flannel pajamas are a really great option, especially <laughs> here in Canada. It gets pretty chilly. Yeah. Um, and they're made of cotton. That's a cotton thing. Right. They're particularly hard to find in 100% cotton right. so if that's important to you it is to me look at the tag look at the listing if you're buying it online look as for as little as more cotton as you possibly can and preferably 100 percent okay if you get 100 percent they're going to shrink when they you put are. them in the dryer yeah. i am very conscious of shrinkage i'm a really tall person i'm six yes. feet tall so i do not want to lose any length in the legs or arms of my pajamas right and so i if i have my flannel pajamas for example i hang them to dry Okay. Only because I want to be conscious not of shrinkage. And I guess you can size up if you think you, can, you might, you know. You can definitely size up yeah. and also feel free to buy men's pajamas. Absolutely. Like, uh, there's so many reasons to look in the men's department. Yeah. One, if you're size sensitive, whether it be me, I want a little bit more length. Yeah. Uh, the men's sizing is usually one size larger than what the women's. So a women's medium is a men's small. Yes. Right? So you yeah. just go down. So you're going to have, you know, a men's double extra large. You, you're, they offer those sizes in a lot of regular uh, lines. Absolutely. So dip into the kind of men's department. And men's yeah. pajamas often have pockets in them. Almost always they yeah. have pockets. Uh, them, which totally. I love. Yeah. Is this one so, 100% cotton? So this one is not. This this, this particular pajama you're touching right now is not 100% cotton. Okay. Um, it's cute with the cats and dogs, it so I pulled cute. it. But you you can find them there. It's not hard. But yeah. cotton comes in different forms too. Mm -hmm. So there's different um, spins and weaves and s the smoothness. Like yes. the pajamas I'm wearing here are from a company called Kip. Yeah. They are 100% cotton and they are luxury. Mm -hmm. They are so beautiful. But when you touch these pajamas versus for a flannel or a really inexpensive blend, yeah. you can tell the difference right away. And when you upgrade and really extra treat yourself into that luxury realm, you're going to get additions like these are lined in satin. They're so pretty. And they come with a travel bag. Yeah. And you're looking, there's cottons also come in, like let's say traditional method, there's organic cotton. And then these pajamas, for example, are the OEKO Tex certified. And that means during the fabrication, they're not using unnecessary chemicals and stuff, which are particularly good for sensitive skin people. Oh, very so, good. So all of that is, all of that is cotton. One yeah, fabric, we just covered that. all that. The Kip ones, get you can get monogrammed as well, which is kind of sweet. Yeah, and they don't charge for the monogram, yeah. which I love. Yeah, yeah, which is lovely. Yeah. Okay, moving right along, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, Modal? No, or, we're well, gonna, this or is sad. Modal. Sad we can go to Mel. Let's go to Modal. Let's go to Modal the just because it's one of my favorites. Yes, Modal is so soft. It's yeah. that kind of slouchy, slinchy, slinky fabric. Yeah. It is very clingy for those who mm -hmm. maybe don't enjoy cling. Yes. Um, it, it's very clingy, but it's a natural fiber as well. It's actually a cellulose from the beech tree. They spin it into a fabric. Oh. And so it's an eco-friendly choice. Good. It uses less water for production. Yeah. So there's lots of reasons to love it, but it's also very breathable. Why? Because it's a natural fabric. The right. more natural it is, the more breathable you're going to get. So if you yeah. run hot, that's a good choice. I find that those have been like a savior in menopause. I like the modal. Oh, yeah, for, for the and breathability. And I like the feel of it. Yes. Like right now, we're going to talk about silk versus satin. I'm in we a are. heat trap right now. Yes. So this is obviously satin. Exactly. So yeah. let's do that. Silk versus satin. I yeah. love them both. When you look at them, they may visually look the same. Mm -hmm. When you touch them, you can tell the difference you can. for sure. Let's start with satin. Satin yeah. is a man-made product. Mm -hmm. It is spun plastic, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's a crude synthetic. way of saying it, but it's totally synthetic. Mm -hmm. So that means zero breathability, hence why you None. feel like you're in a trap. Hot. Yeah. So if you run hot or it's a hot season, yeah. this is absolutely not for you. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's going to be silky and cool, but it's yes. not unless it's silk. Now, because I run cold, I sleep in satin sometimes because I like the additional warmth a little yes. bit and I toss and turn and it slips in the sheets. So I yes. like that. So that works for someone like me. Uh -huh. Satin on the other hand, is, or silk. Uh, or excuse me, silk on the other hand yeah. is luxury fabric. There's mm -hmm. usually a high price point that comes with that. Extremely breathable, mm -hmm. extremely uh, luxurious. Yeah but a little bit touchy to take care of. Satin, washer, dryer, no problem. No big deal. Silk, hand dry, no hand wash preferably or hand cycle. Yeah. Definitely no dryer. It's, so it's a little bit more it's delicate. A lot. It takes a little I bit more work to take silk. care of it. 
Yeah, I don't have any silk either. It's too fussy. I do aspire to a fabulous pair of silk first. One day. For one day. When I grow yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm, when I'm responsible an adult. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk bamboo. Okay, bamboo is a really, mm. really, really good fabric. Yeah. It's it's made from bamboo fibers, so yes. it is uh, natural natural uh, fiber. Yep. Extremely soft. Has a little bit of a give to it, less clingy than the model. Yeah. Um, and it's extremely breathable. They kind of coined this as nature's air conditioner. Yes. So if you're someone who's prone to hot flashes. I should have bamboo pajamas. Yes, you really should. Yeah. Actually, you should. Mm -hmm. And these ones are going to keep you totally comfortable. Also go washer, dryer. There might be slight shrinkage with these. Yeah. So if you're just barely making it, hang them to dry. Otherwise, they can go into the washer and the dryer as well. Love it. Yeah. And we're talking, last but not least, linen. Last but not least, yeah. linen. I love linen. Mm -hmm. It's Probably beautiful. Half of my pajamas are linen. Oh, nice. But here's what you have to do with linen. You have to accept the brutal wrinkles that come with oh, it. Oh, yeah. They get very wrinkly. I love to iron, no surprise. Um, <laughs> nerd. Um, but I love to iron, so nothing I love more than a great linen pajamas out of the dryer, and I crisp those up with the iron and slide <laughs> into them. I just love it. This is her idea of a good time. But it is. <laughs> um, so I really, really love linen, but it's beyond just the, the uh, fun of the ironing and the yes. laundering. It is extremely good fabric for pajamas. It keeps you warm when you need it. It keeps you cool when you need it. So yep. body regulating temperature. Yep. So either season. And it can go in the washer and the dryer. So it's really easy maintenance when it comes to that. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, uh, you know, I already said I love pajamas, but I could have more. And if you want more, we have all of these looks linked. You can actually shop the whole show with that QR code on the screen right now. You just put your phone up to the screen. It'll take you to these items if you're looking for new PJs because now Shona's giving you all the information you need to know <laughs> uh, for which one to buy. Yep. We're headed to break, but this whole hour is about sleeping better here on City Line. so stay with us. <laughs> Coming up, we put anti-snoring devices to the test. I went over, uh -huh. gave him the clip, we put it on. There was no snoring. <gasps> I was shocked. Welcome back to City Line, everyone. It's all about sleep today. Millions of people on this planet snore. And if you live with one, you'd probably love to find a way to stop that noise. With the latest snore devices that may or may not work is Lisa Chang. Thank you for testing these for us. Um, we put you to the test with these. Yes. And uh, who, do you have a snorer in your life? I sure do. And I love him so much, but my God, he snores like a wild boar. Isn't it the worst? It's so, and you're so right. Like I would do anything to stop that snoring from happening. <laughs> Anything. I think to promise that electronic devices on the market will work. You know what? I was surprised by some. Okay. Um, but I will say that some others were a bit dodgy. So we're going to get into that Good. today. I yeah. love that you tested them. So what is the first one you tested? Okay. So the first, I'm going to get right up in your nose. Okay. okay. The first we're going to talk about nasal dilators. Oh. So right here we have the um, electronic snoring device. Uh -huh. Now, what this comes with is two silicone tips at the end. Yeah. And as you can see, T, there's a little toggle here. You're just going to put it on. Now, put that close to your ears. Okay. And you can barely hear that there is air coming there's a out. Buzz. Of, yeah, so that's air oh, okay. that's happening. Now, right. what this promises to do is open up the airways. Okay. Now, that's what no nasal dilators are all about. It's yeah. about opening up the sinuses, opening up the airways. But it goes like this? And yeah, so you stick it in your nose, uh -huh. and then that air is supposed to circulate in your nasal system so that you can breathe better, breathe more Did smoothly. Did you shove this up your husband's nose? Um, I shoved it up mine first, and then, yes, he shoved it up his. And what did you think? Was that a comfortable feeling? So the pros, I yeah. will say, it is comfortable. Is right it? Right out the gate, it is. You don't feel like... <sighs> no, no, because it's soft, right? Okay. It's, it's a gentle... Okay. Uh, Airflow, so it's comfortable. Yeah, I like the fact that it's rechargeable as well. It's okay. quiet, as you can see. Yeah, you can very barely quiet. hear it. Um, and the airflow, to your point, it's not heavy, so mm -hmm. it's not like drying out your nose at the same time. Okay, good. The cons. Yeah, I have lots. Oh, so okay. from the minute that you turn, yeah, the likelihood of this thing falling out of your face pops out is high. So okay. it definitely did that with the both of us. Okay. In addition to that, I'm gonna say it just didn't work. Oh, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. It's okay. not comfortable. I just didn't find it comfortable to sleep in. Yeah. And neither did he. 
Okay. So uh, I will say that this one was a definite pass. Okay, so forget that one. Yeah. Uh, a mouthpiece? No, well, we're, we have another nasal dilator. Oh, what first. does this one do? Okay, so I was really skeptical about this one. This yeah. is called a nose clip. So it's a magnetic nose clip. That is so small. Let me hold that up for you, Dan. <laughs> so it's the smallest little uh, clip there. Yes. Is it almost like a septum ring that people get? You got it. That? So as you can see, there's the two magnets down at the bottom. Yeah. And the way it works is is you just clip it to the they end go of your, your nose. nose. Should I do it? You can if you want. Are, is this going anywhere? Like, no, 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 it's, it? it's yours, T. You can keep it after this. See? <laughs> there you go. Okay. You're ready for the club on a Saturday night. Right? Woo! <laughs> Let's go! Now, what this is supposed to do is the two magnets are supposed to gently pull at the muscles in your nasal cavity. Yeah. So again, it's opening up the airways. Oh. Now, he wore it the first night. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. But he fell asleep on the couch yesterday for a little Sunday nap. Yeah. He fell asleep on his back, mouth was open, and he was snoring. I went over, uh -huh. gave him the clip, he put it on. Yeah. Fell back asleep in a deep sleep, mouth open and all, and yeah. I will tell you, there was no snoring. <gasps> I was shocked. This little thing. I was yeah. shocked. Now, okay. what I'll say is that there's a lot of reviews online, a lot of positive reviews. Some, for some people, it also didn't work. I think there's a learning curve behind this. You have okay. to keep wearing it to get used to it. Yeah. But listen, I was surprised by it. Okay, that's good. Right now, it feels like I have boogies in my nose. Yeah, well. But I, but I can see actually getting to a point where I don't notice it at all. Exactly. Like you get more and more used to it. Yes. And who knew a little thing like that could work? That's a incredible. Clip. Yeah. Um, okay, now let's go to the mouth. Okay, so quickly, this is bringing me back to my retainer days. Yeah. But it's not the mouth guard that you would get at the dental office. Again, this one is a bit more budget friendly. Okay. Now, as you can see here, based on the design, what this is going to do is bring your lower jaw a little bit forward. So what oh, it's going to do underbite. is going to open up your throat. Okay. So those tissues are not knocking against each other and you're oh, not snoring. Got it. Now the way to use this is you put in hot water. Uh -huh. You allow that guard to sit submerged in the hot water for about 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. You take it out. You rinse it under lukewarm water. Place it in your mouth and just like a mouth guard at the dental office, you would bite down for 30 seconds, yeah. release it, and do that repetitively. In the end, what is supposed to happen is this is supposed to comfortably fit into your mouth. Yeah. I will say this, I like the fact that it's reusable, I like mm -hmm. the fact that it molds to your face, yeah. but again, it was not comfortable for me. I have a bit more s smaller of a jaw. Yeah. I didn't feel like one size fit all. Got it. But again, maybe it requires multiple usage. Okay, all right. So that was a not comfort thing, but in terms of snoring, you, did you see any difference? No or difference. Didn't there. Okay, no got difference it. There. Okay, next up, what do we got? Okay, next up is nasal irrigation. So you've <laughs> heard of a neti pot. Yeah. The problem with a neti pot is you got to get the right angle. Sometimes yeah. it's dripping all over you. You got to get the right saline solution. Yeah. This is a nasal irrigation system called Navage. There okay. are 30,000 almost five star reviews on this system Whoa. online. You have premixed saline solution. What you're okay. going to do is put in warm, uh, filtered water into the system. Just like making your coffee in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> but you're putting saline. And you can see that it's going to shoot water through one side. Uh -huh. And when your nose is on the other side, it's going to suction in all of that blockage that's in your face. It's going to come down here. You're going to empty it. It's a lot cleaner to use yeah. than a neti pot would be yeah. and a lot more gentle because you're not squirting that water yes. right up your face. If you need to switch the direction of the, two, the, the nasal tips as yeah. well, you can do that so you can switch between nostrils. And is this supposed to make it so that you clear everything out and then you go to bed? You do that right before bed? Correct. So okay. you're not blocked, right? You're yeah. not plugged up. And sometimes it's as simple of a solution as that. What'd you think? I loved it, oh, actually. Oh, okay, good. Loved it, and I think considering cold and flu season yes. and allergy season, this would be a great solution. Even not, even not for snoring. How gross was the stuff that came out? It was, yeah, you know, not pretty. Okay, your last two uh, are all about uh, wanting to block out the noise. Yeah, so that's for so people... So maybe they're going to snore, but now I can't hear it. For sure, that's for people like me. Yeah. So the loop earplugs, I will say, this is a TikTok sensation. Oh, yeah? It has all kinds of customizable tips. All you have to do is insert that earplug in your ear, mm -hmm. twist it, yep. and you literally are blocking out all of the noise. Can you hear me? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Five star reviews across the board, really, really so love. So simple, the, and it works. It does. And this, this one? This is a Bluetooth headband. 
Tracy, I loved this thing. Really? If you go to sleep with white noise, meditation, yeah. you know, relaxation type music, you are going to love this. It's got the, the uh, headphones here on the side. Oh. Again, connects via Bluetooth. And it's an eye mask. Loved it. I say get this for any travel plans you have in the future. Absolutely. Right? You won't be able to hear anyone around you and you can still sleep. There's nothing in your ears except for these. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you for trying all of these. And all the products are available on Amazon, but you can actually buy them through us by scanning that QR code on your screen right now. It looks like there are so many of them that work and some of them you might just want to leave behind. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Let's go to break. More coming up. Stay with us. I will accept them. Up. Yoga can help you sleep and unlock the mysteries of your pets. Keeping the airways open is really important for when we're sleeping. So is this what my dog is doing when he's doing this Exactly. <laughs> Ready to unleash a brand new you? Wow, you're like a million bucks. <laughs> CityLine's Glam Squad wants to give you the makeover of your dreams. Head to CityLine.tv and click on the makeover tab or just scan the code on your screen. Oh my goodness! Your new look is only a click away. Welcome back to CityLine, everyone. You know, sleep impacts every part of our lives, and it is crucial to get it right, given that we spend a third of our lives doing it. Here with the moves to calm our minds and relax our bodies before bed is Seth Mohan. Good to see you, Seth, always. Thank you. Good to Especially be here. Especially with the cool microphone. Who did you have to bribe to get one of those? <laughs> it's my TED Talk today. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love them. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about calming ourselves down, and what do we need to think about right before we go to bed? So, you know, sleep is something I've been really obsessing about for a long time. You can see my shirt says Dada. I became a dad a couple Dada. of years ago. And so sleep became a really big part of, like, just feeling good and being able to function. Yes. And one of the things I, we've talked about breath before. Yeah. And breath and sleep are really closely connected. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is we have two types of our nervous system. There's the fight or flight. Yeah. And the rest and digest. Okay. And the inhale is activating and it puts us into that fight or flight mode. And the exhale is relaxing. It puts us into rest and digest. Okay. So for the purpose of sleep, what we want to do is we want to be more on the rest and digest. So you want to extend your exhale, mm -hmm. lengthen the exhale, and slow the breath down. Okay. Should we practice? Yeah. So Let's you're breathing in and out through the nose. And just slow exhales. You do and it with your mouth closed, huh? And while you're getting into your bedtime routine, you can start to have this breathing pattern be a part of that routine. Yeah. The other thing that oftentimes people, why they have a hard time sleeping is because of tension. Right. There's a few places in our body where we really hold on to tension. One of them is the jaw. Yes, right? I have a mouth guard at night. There so you go. it's because of the grinding. Grinding. And you know, it's great for your jawline. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's not so good for sleeping. So one of the things right. you want to do is before you sleep is your masseter muscle, which is that big chewing muscle that yes. we have. Is just to take you can take your knuckles here, or just the back of the fingers, and just relax your oh, mouth. Oh yeah. And on the downward, you're relaxing that muscle. So essentially you're you're almost massaging it. Yes. You're lengthening that muscle down. And this is a way to loosen up the muscles in your jaw. Oh, that's good. Because yeah, really I've been told by my dentist I have to be very intentional about, about not grinding my teeth because totally. it'll break the enamel. Yeah. And then it's not, you're not relaxed, right? Yeah. So you're, that you're is really good. You're holding that tension good. all night. If you have a uh, gausha, you can yes. use that as well. That's a great way of doing so that. So good. Yeah. Okay, so with the baby, how old is your child? She's almost three. Almost three? Yeah. Are you sleeping, Dada? Yes. Okay, yes, so you're sleeping. following your own tips. Yes, yes. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, poses we can do. For sure, yeah. yeah. So, you know, getting into the jaw, the neck, that's yes. the place where we hold on tension as well. So yeah. I just like to do some rotations, easy rotations. You don't have to do a lot of them, but just mm -hmm. enough that you feel like you've loosened up some of the muscles around the neck and upper back going both ways. And also movement helps to lubricate the joints. So if you're sitting at a desk and you're rounding your back a lot, this is a nice way to just release that tension. So coming down from the jaw, the neck, now we're gonna get into the upper back and the chest. So I'm gonna get into the bed here. This is an extended puppy pose. Okay. And the way that this looks is your hips are on top of the knees. You bring your forearms down onto the mat or onto the bed if you're doing it on the bed. And you extend the elbows away from you. An option is to bring your forehead on the mat 
if you prefer, you can also have your chin down as long as that's okay for your neck. Mm -hmm. And what this does is helps to stretch the upper back, but it also helps to open up the airways. Okay. That was one thing that um, Lisa was mentioning as well is keeping the airways open is really important for when we're sleeping. So is this what my dog is doing when he's doing this exactly. pose? Exactly. <laughs> and, you'll, and you'll notice oftentimes after dogs do this, they yawn. They do. Right? It's because this is how they sort of get that more air into their systems. Yeah. So you can spend about 30 seconds here. Mm -hmm. It feels really good to just hang out here. And then transitioning from here into child's pose, where you're taking these a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. And you bring your sit bones down closer to the heels. Yeah. And now you bring here. If your knees are in any kind of pain here, you can bring a folded blanket or towel in between your calf and thighs. Just so your knees are not in deep flexion. Nice. And then relaxing here, resting your forehead down. Lovely. And really breathing into your lower back. Often we think about breath just happening in the front part of our ch uh, chest. Yeah. But the breath can also go into the lower and mid back. So you want to open up that space and breathing there can help release tension in the lower and mid back as well. So just relaxing here. Such a good tip because I find it hard to breathe when uh, I'm in child's pose. It's because you need to be putting your breath back there. Exactly. Because your okay. breath will be restricted in the front. Yes. So you, so you can send it into the lower and mid back here. Nice. So once again, 30 seconds, mm -hmm. a minute. You can hang out here for a little while longer mm -hmm. and then flipping over onto your back. It's almost bedtime. Almost We're bedtime. getting there. We're getting there. Yay. And as you get onto your back, mm -hmm. you're here. And we start off first by extending the legs up. Okay. And what this does is one of the things, it brings the blood flow from your feet into the heart. So you're actually refreshing the blood that's been sitting in the legs for a while. Yep. Lifting the legs also helps to soothe the nervous system. So it's really okay. great just to help promote a sense of relaxation. You can even bring a bit of a stretch here by using your hands. We then move into... Happy baby, mm -hmm. taking your knees as wide as it will go. Hands come on the inside. You reach up to grab your shins, ankles, feet, whatever you can hold on to comfortably. Mm -hmm. And then using your arms to open up into the inner thighs. Hips is another place where we hold on to tension in our bodies. Yeah. So stretching into those areas is really good just to help feel relaxed all over. You can go a little bit side to side. Find that We're happy walking. baby, that joyful energy. I'm saying if I'm doing happy baby and my husband walks in the room, I'm not getting any sleep that night. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's good for the person doing the happy baby. I hope that you get some sleep, but I don't know if I will do that. But it's a good one for the back and everything. <laughs> um, or do, you, or do, you, do you have any more, I guess, Shavasana? You want yeah, to end we go into Shavasana. Before we go into Shavasana, <laughs> I like to do a very concentrated squeeze here where you're actually okay. bringing up as much tension in the body as you can. So you're scrunching the muscles of your face, you're yeah. bringing your arms, your legs, everything to get as tight as you can. Yeah. And really squeezing yourself into a ball and then holding that for a few breaths and then you release and just like a spring uncoils, you take up space and you find that relaxation. I love it, Seth. Thank you so much for that. We couldn't find a bed big enough for Seth, but uh, we do want to give a big thank you uh, to our friends at IKEA for this entire bedroom set. It is gorgeous. And enjoy some shopping on us. Everyone in our audience is gonna go home with an IKEA gift card. <laughs> go find you some great IKEA products. Seth, thank you for that. We will see you on the other side. I hope you're sleepy. That was so good. Coming up, finding your sleep style. I've always been the morning girl, even as I'm like partying in the club, like I'm oh. getting up the next day. Okay, so okay. I've always been the morning girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, weirdo. Not me. today and I, I love to sleep we're about to get really personal about our sleeping habits so Shona has a snooze style quiz for oh, us sure and so we brought everyone back Lisa Seth and Alana are back and me as well I'm gonna play too <laughs> so you can take it away okay okay so I'm a very very early morning person yeah so do you all consider yourself a morning person night owl or like somewhere in between Lisa night owl 100 percent somewhere okay. between Summer routine, yeah. elaborate, please. <laughs> so I, I've been forced to be a, a morning person because of becoming a dad, but if I had oh. my own way, I would sleep until probably 9 a.m. <laughs> okay, that's good. 9 o'clock's your time. Yeah. 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 
I'd like to sleep till 9 a.m., but my body just doesn't let me. So I don't know if that's because I, when my kids were little, but I'm a morning person. I wake okay. up pretty cheery in the morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And around what time do your eyeballs open? If, like if by 7. 7 o'clock yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Tracy? I'm an early, early, early morning person. Yes. I'm like, like a 4, 4.15. I'm up every day. And if yeah. I was just like natural and I didn't have the gym, it would probably be 5.30. Yes. I'm yes. always going to be an early girl. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. A, is the rest of your house out early too? Absolutely not. No. I put in a full <laughs> day's work. Before the dog has opened his eyes, like, I'm like second shift starting now. Okay, but yeah. now I need to know: Did you become that early of a person so you could had time to get the full day work in before the at a necessity? Now it's definitely necessity, yeah. but I've always been the morning girl, even as okay. I'm like partying in the club, like wow. I'm getting up the next day. Okay, so okay. I've always been the morning girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, weirdo. Not me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a morning person now, but I wasn't yeah. before. I okay, getcha. now when you're sleeping in your bedding, this yeah. is controversial for some people. <gasps> Here it goes. I have done both, so I lay right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Are you top sheet or mm -hmm. no top sheet? Mm -hmm. Top sheet. Top sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just recently did a top sheet. Okay. And I felt like a grown up when I did it. Like, oh. it felt good. But I have to say, I actually went back because it's, it's more about you don't making do the bed. Ass. It's the, it's the laziness oh, when you yes. make the bed. Yes, I yeah. get that. Yeah. Yeah, we actually recently switched to the top sheet as well. My wife brought it in. I was like, wow, we're like adults now. Right? And it's, yeah. 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 <laughs> It, it feels classy too. I kind of like it. Yeah. yeah, it's classy. <laughs> I love it. And I will be the controversial one and say no top sheet. No mm -hmm. top sheet. Because I can't sleep if there's like a wrinkle in the sheet or if there's something oh, yes. that's like getting in the that. way. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. And with a top sheet, it's easier laundry too because you don't have to wash your duvet cover right. yes. when you're doing yeah, your sheeting, that's true. Yeah. your bedding. So I, I get either way. That's my version that's of going back. That's what my mama it. taught me. Mm -hmm. Top yeah. sheet. Yeah, yeah. top sheet. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Okay. Now, hard pillow versus soft pillow. Mm -hmm, I'm soft. You're soft? Yeah. I'm an in-between. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Do you like one hot. night you're one, one night you're other? Or no, you're I like mean, a medium? I don't want it too, medium. Like, yeah, I don't want okay. it too hard. I don't want it too, I don't want to feel like Goldilocks. my head's on the mattress. You're a little right. Goldilocks? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it on the harder side. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. harder. Yeah, firm. Yeah, firmer. Soft all the way. <laughs> and soft yeah. all the way. All the way. I'm like that. I'm soft and flat. A soft I, flat. I don't want a flippy one. All right. Yeah. Okay, last question. Yes. <laughs> Full oh, set of line. pajamas or birthday suit or somewhere in between. Tracy. Well, I walk around my house all day in pajamas, and then I take them off to go to sleep. <gasps> Amen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I haven't slept in clothing in, like, probably two decades. Yeah. 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 Okay. No clothes. It's the best sleep ever, birthday suit. And people yeah. would be like, but well, when the kids were young and you had to wake up, I would get up, put on my pajamas, yeah. and then go to their bedroom. Worth so it. So it's a lot. Worth it. Yeah. 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 I'm somewhere in between. I was just telling Lisa, my I have pajamas hung in my closet for this show only when I have to wear pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> we got like 30 seconds so quick. quick. Naked or clothes? Uh, yeah, just underwear and t-shirt. Yeah. Underwear and t-shirt, Lise? A uh, ratty old t-shirt that I've had for years and I, I won't change out of it. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Shows, you wear clothes? Pajamas, yeah, pajamas. Pajamas love all the pajamas. way. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. And we are going to break. We got a little bit more coming up. Stay with us. You, yes, you. I've got a seat in City Line's audience waiting just for you. Head to cityline.tv slash tickets to go behind the scenes with your favorite experts, the chance of great giveaways, plus all the unexpected fun of bringing City Line to your screens. What are you waiting for? Go click. We can't wait to see you. sleep show and blankets of course are super important to get that perfect night of slumber wouldn't you agree mm -hmm. tuck is a proudly canadian women-owned bedding company dedicated to thoughtful design and sustainable manufacturing they just launched this blanket that goes with tuck's award-winning bedding collection and you're all taking a tuck 50 dollars gift card Yay! with you story I was on a photo shoot recently and Tuck was there doing a photo shoot for their products and I got to feel the fabric and it's beautiful so you enjoy that thank you for all the incredible info Seth you made me sleepy <laughs> Atlanta great tips Lisa now I'll get someone to stop snoring show us the pajamas top notch thank you to all of you watching at home and I hope you learned a little something something and sweet dreams my friends we'll see you tomorrow on City Line <laughs>